Today, we'll be discussing trigonometric inverse functions. Now, to understand trigonometric inverse function, first we have to understand trigonometric function. So, what is the role of a trigonometric function? Any trigonometric function, say, y equals sin x, it takes any angle x as an input and gives the value of sin as the output. Suppose we take x as 0. So when x is 0, sin 0 is 0. If we take angle as pi by 6, sin x will give us 1 by 2. At pi by 4, we will get the value of sin as 1 by root 2. At pi by 3, we will be getting this value as root 3 by 2. And at pi by 2, we will get the value of sin x as 1. Now, what about trigonometric inverse function? Now, role of inverse function, it will be opposite to that of this trigonometric function. Now, when we write trigonometric inverse function, we write them as sin inverse of x or we write them as arc sin x. Now, here the input will be values of x and output will be the angles. So, we'll put x as 0, we'll get sin inverse x as 0. If we'll put x as 1 by 2, we'll get sin inverse x as pi by 6. If we'll put this value as 1 by root 2, we'll get value of sin inverse x as pi by 4. So, any trigonometric inverse function is nothing but an angle. So, from now on, Whenever you see any trigonometric inverse function, just think of it as an angle. It is nothing but some angle theta. Now, one problem that still remains is, suppose we wish to find the value of sine inverse 1 by 2. So, we need to find an angle at which the value of sine theta is 1 by 2. So, we know that value of sine theta is 1 by 2 at pi by 6, but this value is also 1 by 2 at 5 pi by 6 and many other different angles. Now, definition of function says, for any one valid input, there has to be only one output. In this case, we are getting multiple outputs. So still it is not a function. So how do we define trigonometric inverse function? Now in order to be able to define inverse trigonometric function, we have to go back to functions. Suppose we have any function f defined from a to b, y equals fx, now, if this function is 1, 1 and on 2, then we say this function is invertible and we define inverse of this function as f inverse from b to a, y equals f inverse of x. And if we have to draw the graph of f inverse x from the graph of fx, all we need to do is we need to take a reflection of graph of y equals fx about y equals x line. So using this fundamental concept, we'll try and define trigonometric inverse functions and we'll also draw their graphs. Now the first trigonometric inverse function is y equals sine inverse of x. Now for sine inverse x, our basic function is sin x. Now we have to define sin x in the interval so that it is 1, 1 and on 2. So what we'll do is we'll define function sin x in the interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and its range will be minus 1 and plus 1 and this is how we can write y equals sin x. Now we'll draw this graph. That's the graph of y equals sin x from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And this is plus 1 and this is minus 1. And in this interval, this function is both 1, 1 and on 2. Now when this function is both 1, 1 and on 2, we can now define its inverse function. So its inverse function will be defined from b to a. So we have to write sine inverse, we write f inverse 
from minus 1 to 1 to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and we'll write this as y equals sine inverse of x. So this is how we fundamentally define inverse trigonometric functions. Now this is domain of sine inverse and this is range and we call this as principal value range. So when we study trigonometric inverse function, the first and the foremost important thing is its principal value range. So for each of the six trigonometric functions, you must know its domain as well as its principal value range. We could have defined this function from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Then we could have got a different range. So for different intervals, we'll get different range. But we have defined these functions such that this range from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, it becomes our standard range, which we call principal value range. Now we have to draw the graph of sine inverse of x. Now one way of drawing this graph can be invert the values on x-axis and y-axis. So here will be minus 1, plus 1. Here it is pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. Now if we look at this point, this point is pi by 2 comma 1. Now we'll interchange x and y. So here it will be 1 comma pi by 2. So I'll mark this point. So this point is 1 comma pi by 2. This point is 0 comma 0. So if I interchange x and y, this will again be 0 comma 0. And this point it is minus pi by 2 minus 1. Now it will be minus 1 minus pi by 2. So we'll draw a freehand sketch. Now this is the graph of sine inverse of x. And as it is evident from the graph, this sine inverse x, it is an increasing function. We will need this information when we are going to solve inequality problems. Now the second one is y equals cos inverse of x. So for this we will define cos x from 0 to pi and range of cos x is minus 1 to 1 and this is y equals cos x so cos 0 is 1 cos pi by 2 is 0 and then cos pi is minus 1 so that is the graph of cos x in the interval 0 to pi now cos inverse will be defined from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to pi. So principal value range of cos inverse is from 0 to pi and we'll write this as y equals cos inverse of x. Now we have to draw the graph of cos inverse. We'll plot these values on x-axis and y-axis. So on x-axis we'll have minus 1, plus 1 and 0 and on y-axis we'll have pi by 2 and pi. Now this point, it is pi comma minus 1, here it will be minus 1 comma pi. So at minus 1, this value will be pi. Now this is pi by 2 comma 0, here it will be 0 comma pi by 2. And this point is 0 comma 1, now it will be 1 comma 0. So we will draw a freehand sketch. That is the graph of y equals cos inverse of x. Now the third one is. y equals 10 inverse of x. So again, we'll define 10 inverse. We'll define it in such a way that it will be 1, 1 and on 2. So this is y equals 10x. Pi by 2 minus pi by 2, 0. Now for 10 inverse, we'll define it from R2 minus pi by 2 
to plus pi by 2 and it will be y equals 10 inverse of x. Now we will draw this graph. Now previously we have two vertical asymptotes. Here we will have two horizontal asymptotes. So this is pi by 2 and this is minus pi by 2. Now this is 0 comma 0. So it will still be 0 comma 0. Now in this case when x is pi by 2 y is infinite. So here it will be when x is infinite y is pi by 2. So at infinite it will be pi by 2 and the same way at minus pi by 2 it was minus infinite. So here at minus infinite it will be minus pi by 2. So this graph will start from here at 0 it will be 0 and then at infinite it will be pi by 2. So that is the graph of y equals 10 inverse of x with its principal value range at minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2. Now we will come to y equals cot inverse of x. Now for cot inverse we will define cot x from 0 to pi range is r this is y equals cot x this is 0 pi by 2 and pi and that's the graph of cot x now we'll define cot inverse and it'll be defined from r to 0 to pi and it'll be y equals cot inverse of x now we'll mark values on x axis and y axis so this is pi by 2 and we'll have an asymptote at pi now this point is pi by 2 comma 0 here it will be 0 comma pi by 2 at 0 it is plus infinite so at infinite it will now be 0 and at pi it is minus infinite so at minus infinite it will be pi so this is the graph of y equals cot inverse of x with its principal value range at 0 to pi. Now fifth one is y equals cosec inverse of x. So for this we will define this function from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 except 0 and its range will be from minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite. Now we will draw this graph so this is minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 this is plus 1 and this is minus 1. So that is the graph of y equals cosec x in the interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 except 0 and its range is from minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite. We will define this function f inverse from minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 except 0 and it will be y equals cosec inverse of x. Now we will have to draw this graph. So this is 0. We will have asymptotes at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. And then we will also mark minus 1 and plus 1. Now this point is pi by 2 comma 1. Here it will be 1 comma pi by 2. So at 1 value is pi by 2. Now this is when x is 0 y is infinite. So at infinite this value will be 0. So we will join this. 
this point is minus pi by 2 minus 1. Now here will be minus 1 minus pi by 2. So at minus 1, this value will be minus pi by 2. And here when x is 0, y is minus infinite. So at minus infinite, this value will be 0. So that is the graph of y equals cosec inverse of x. And then finally, we'll have our sixth graph, which is y equals secant inverse of x. And for that, we'll define secant theta in the interval 0 to pi, except at pi by 2. And its range will be from minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite. So we'll draw this graph. So this is plus one and minus one. This is pi by two and this is pi. Now graph of secant x is this one. So this is your function y equals secant x. Now we'll define secant inverse and it'll be defined from minus infinite to minus one union one to infinite to zero to pi minus pi by two and it'll be y equals secant inverse of x and now we'll draw its graph. So we'll mark the points. So zero pi by 2, pi, asymptote at pi by 2, and we have minus 1 and plus 1. Now this point is 0, 1, so here it will be 1, 0, so at 1, this value will be 0. Now when x is pi by 2, y is infinite, so when x is infinite now, y will be pi by 2. So this way. Now this point is pi comma minus 1. So at minus 1, it will be pi. And when x is pi by 2, y is minus infinite. So at minus infinite, it will be pi by 2. So that is the graph of secant inverse of x and its principal value ranges from 0 to pi minus pi by 2. So this is how we define and draw the graphs of trigonometric inverse functions. For all the six trigonometric functions, you must know their domain and most importantly, their principal value range. So for sine inverse x, principal value range is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, which makes fourth and first quadrant. For cos inverse, principal value range is from 0 to pi, which is first and second quadrant. For tan inverse, it is again fourth and first from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, both not inclusive. For cot inverse, it is again first and second. For cosec inverse x, it is again fourth and first, again from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, except at 0. And for secant inverse, it is 0 to pi, except pi by 2, which again is first and second quadrant. So whenever we are going to write any trigonometric inverse function, We'll think of this trigonometric inverse function as some angle theta and we need to ensure that this value of theta, it must lie in principal value range unless otherwise stated in the problem. So now when we write sine inverse 1 by 2, so we know that this angle, it must lie between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2. So in this interval, the only possible solution is pi by 6. In the same way, if we have to write sine inverse minus 1 by 2, now in the fourth quadrant, value of sine theta will be minus 1 by 2 at minus pi by 6. So this is how we are going to use these principal value range. Now there are questions based on principal value range, which at first appear very difficult, but then they are simple problems. Say for example, if sine inverse x plus sine inverse y plus sine inverse z 
equals 3 pi by 2, then find the value of x to the power 2020 plus y to the power 2020, z to the power 2020 plus 1 upon x to the power 2020 plus 1 upon y to the power 2020 plus 1 upon z to the power 2020. Now we have not studied any formula for sum of inverse trigonometric function. Now what we see here is we see sum of three sine inverse functions and we know that principal value range of any sine inverse function is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So this sine inverse x will be less than equal to pi by 2. This sine inverse y will also be less than equal to pi by 2 and this sine inverse z will also be less than or equal to pi by 2. But on the right hand side we have 3 pi by 2 which is pi by 2 plus pi by 2 plus pi by 2. So that means this right hand side is only possible when this sine inverse x is pi by 2, this sine inverse y is pi by 2 and sine inverse z is also pi by 2. So we will take sine inverse of x is pi by 2 we will take the sign on the right hand side, we will write x as sin pi by 2 and sin 90 is 1. So value of x is 1 in the same way value of y is 1 and the value of z is 1. So this is nothing but 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 6. So answer to this question is simply 6. Another question is cos inverse a1 plus cos inverse a2 plus cos inverse a3 plus cos inverse a n is 0 find the value of a1 into a2 into a3 up to a n. Now again for this question if we look at cos inverse x principal value range of cos inverse x is from 0 to pi. So cos inverse function is either 0 or a positive number. Now, sum of all these cos inverses, they cannot take a negative value. So, their sum can only be 0 if all of them are 0. So, from here, if we write cos inverse ai, it is 0. Then ai will be cos 0 and cos 0 is nothing but 1. So, each of this ai is 1. So, a1 is 1, a2 is 1, a3 is 1, an is 1. So, the value of a1 into a2 into a3 into an will be simply 1. And that is the answer to this question. Now let us take another example which is if sin inverse a square plus cos inverse b square plus secant inverse c square plus cosec inverse d square is 5 pi square by 2 then the value of sin inverse a square minus cos inverse b square plus secant inverse c square minus cosec inverse d square. Now when we say sin inverse a square we know that maximum value of sin inverse is pi by 2. So sin inverse a square will always be less than or equal to pi square by 4. In the same way, cos inverse b square will always be less than or equal to pi square. Secant inverse c whole square will be less than or equal to pi square and cosec inverse d square will always be less than or equal to pi square by 4. Now we'll add them all up, we'll get sin inverse a square plus cos inverse b square plus secant inverse c square plus cosec inverse d square and it'll be less than or equal to 2 pi square plus pi square by 4. So it'll be 5 pi square by 2. Now in the question we are given this equality sign. So this equality sign is possible if and only if all these values they are equal. So from here we'll get sin inverse a s plus or minus pi by 2. So value of a will be plus or minus sin pi by 2 which is plus or minus 1 cos inverse b it will be plus or minus pi. Now it cannot take the value minus pi will be plus pi now cos pi is minus 1 so value of b will be minus 1 in the same way secant inverse c will be pi so c will be minus 1 
and cosec inverse d will be again plus or minus pi by 2 value of d will be plus or minus 1 now in the question we are not supposed to find the value of a b c d i have just done that to show you how do we find the values of a b c d we just need to find the value of this expression now sin inverse a square is pi square by 4 so this value is pi square by 4 minus pi square plus pi square and then minus pi square by 4 which is nothing but 0 and that is the answer to this question now there will be questions where we will need to use domain of trigonometric inverse functions also so let us take a function which is fx is sine inverse log to the base 2 x by 2 and we will need to find domain of this function now for sine inverse we know that its domain is from minus 1 to plus 1 so we can write this log x by 2 to the base 2 it must lie between minus 1 and plus 1 now we will take anti log since base is greater than 1 it is an increasing function sine won't change so we will get this as 2 to the power minus 1 is less than equal to x by 2 is less than equal to 2 now we'll multiply it with 2 so we get 1 is less than equal to x is less than equal to 4 so domain of this function is from 1 to 4 now there'll be many questions in trigonometric inverse functions which can be solved just by looking at domain of the function say for example this question which says find the number of real solutions of 10 inverse under root x into x plus 1 plus sin inverse under root x square plus x plus 1 equals pi by 2. Now what we'll do is we'll first find domain of this question. Now for this 10 inverse x we know that domain of 10 inverse is x belongs to r and then we have this square root. For this square root condition should be x into x plus 1 it should be greater than or equal to 0. Now for this sin inverse we know that it's domain is from minus 1 to plus 1 and since it is a square root it cannot take a negative value so from here we'll get this condition that under root of x square plus x plus 1 it should be less than or equal to 1 now we'll square it we'll get x square plus x plus 1 is less than equal to 1 and the condition will be x square plus x should be less than or equal to 0 so we're getting two simultaneous conditions one is this x into x plus 1 should be 0 or greater than 0 and here it is x into x plus 1 should be 0 or less than 0. Now both of them they can only be simultaneously true if and only if x into x plus 1 is 0. So the domain of this function is just two values 0 and 1. So for this question there are only two values of x which are possible and they are 0 and minus 1. Now I will take x as 0. Here it will be 10 inverse 0 plus sin inverse 1. 10 inverse 0 is 0 and sin inverse 1 is pi by 2. We will get this value pi by 2. So x equal to 0 is one solution and if we will take x as minus 1. Now again it will be 10 inverse 0 and plus sin inverse 1 which again is pi by 2. So that means there are only two real solutions of this equation and that's your option number c now the next question is if the domain of this function fx equals under root 3 cos inverse 4x minus pi is a to b then the value of 4a plus 64 b is now we know that for this under root function 3 cos inverse 4x minus pi it should be greater than or equal to 0. So from here we'll write cos inverse 4x, it should be greater than or equal to pi by 3. Now here we have this cos inverse function and we know that principal value range of cos inverse function is from 0 to pi. So additionally we have this condition that cos inverse 4x must be less than or equal to pi. Now this cos inverse function if we'll recall its graph, it is a decreasing function. So when we take cos, the sign of inequality will change. So we'll get cos pi by 3 
it'll be less than or equal to 4x and it'll be greater than or equal to cos pi. Now cos pi by 3 is 1 by 2 and it'll be greater than or equal to 4x and it'll be greater than or equal to minus 1. So value of x, it should lie between minus 1 by 4 and 1 by 8. So here the value of a is minus 1 by 4 and the value of b is 1 by 8. Now we need to find the value of 4a plus 64b. Now value of a is minus 1 by 4 and value of b is 1 by 8. So it will be minus 1 plus 8 and that is 7. So answer to this question will be simply 7. Now let us take another question. Sin inverse x square plus 2x plus 2 plus 10 inverse x square minus 3x minus k square is greater than pi by 2. We need to find the value of k. Now we can write this as sine inverse and here it will be x plus 1 whole square plus 1 plus 10 inverse x square minus 3x minus k square and it is greater than pi by 2. Now we know that domain of sine inverse x is x should lie between minus 1 and plus 1 and domain of 10 inverse x is x belongs to r. So we don't have a problem with 10 inverse. So for this sine inverse we can write x plus 1 whole square plus 1 it should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. Now this is always true because the right hand side is always positive. Now we'll solve this condition. Now 1 and 1 will cancel. We'll get x plus 1 whole square it is less than or equal to 0. Now square of a number cannot be negative. So the only possible condition in this case is value of x should be minus 1. So for this inequality there is only one value of x which is possible. So domain of this question will be value of x should be minus 1. Now we'll put x as minus 1. We'll get sine inverse 1 plus 10 inverse. Now it'll be 1 plus 3 minus k square and it is greater than pi by 2. Now sine inverse 1 is pi by 2. So this pi by 2 and pi by 2 will cancel. So we'll get this condition that 10 inverse 4 minus k square is greater than 0. Now 10 inverse, it is an increasing function. So if we'll take 10 both sides, we'll get 4 minus k square, it should be greater than 0. That is k square is less than 4 or mod k is less than 2, which means value of k should lie between minus 2 and plus 2, which satisfies all the four options. So answer is a, b, c and d. Now another question is the trigonometric equation sin inverse x equals 2 sin inverse a has a solution for which of the following conditions of a. Now we know that this equation will have a solution if the value on the right hand side lies in its principal value range. So it simply means this 2 sin inverse a, it must lie between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2. So we can write minus pi by 4 is less than equal to sin inverse a is less than equal to pi by 4. Now we'll take sin, then sin minus pi by 4 will be minus 1 by root 2 is less than equal to a is less than equal to 1 by root 2. So from here we'll get this condition that mod of a is less than or equal to 1 by root 2 and that's your option d. Now here the question is we are given two sets e1 and e2 and we are given two functions fx and gx. fx is log x upon x minus 1 and gx is sine inverse log x upon x minus 1. Now first we will find domain of f and g. So we'll start with this function gx. For this function gx, we have sine inverse function. And for sine inverse, domain is x should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. So for this function gx, we can write this log e x upon x minus 1. It should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. Now base is greater than 1. It will take anti-log. Sine won't change. So we'll get 1 upon e is less than x upon x minus 1 is less than e. 
Now we'll subtract one and add one. We can write one upon e is less than one plus one upon x minus one is less than e, or we can write one minus e upon e is less than equal to one upon x minus one and it is less than e minus one. Now this interval it contains zero. Now we have this condition that one upon x lies between a and b, where zero belongs to a and b. So here, either the value of x is less than one upon a, or the value of x is greater than one upon b. So from here we'll get this condition that x minus one it should be less than or equal to e upon one minus e. That is, value of x is less than or equal to e upon one minus e plus one, or x minus one is greater than or equal to one upon e minus one. That is, x is greater than or equal to one upon e minus one plus one. So from here we'll get this condition that x is less than or equal to one upon one minus e, or x is greater than or equal to e upon e minus one. So domain of this function g, which is e two, it is defined as minus infinite to one upon one minus e inclusive union e two e minus one. To infinite, and that's your option one. So this S, it matches with one. Now we'll find domain of this function f. Now domain of this function f is e one, and e one is the condition that x upon x minus one is greater than zero. Now this is zero and one, so it'll be plus minus n plus. So we'll get the condition that either x is less than zero or x is greater than one, and it is given that for e two x belongs to e one. That is, e two is a subset of e one. So domain of G, which is e two, it is contained in domain of F. So domain of F will contain domain of G. That means this R also it matches with one. Now we look at all other options, which contains the element either less than zero or greater than one. So between zero and one, it is not possible. It contains element between zero and one. It will also have elements between zero and one. Again, it's not possible, and it is also not possible. So this R, it also matches with only S. Now we need to find range of f and range of g. Now this function f, it is defined as. Log x upon x minus one. Let us take this as y. We'll get x upon x minus one as e to the power y. We'll get x minus one as e to the power minus y into x. So x will be one upon one minus e to the power minus y. Now, what is the restriction for this function? Restriction for this function is denominator. It must not be zero. So we'll get e to the power minus y. It is unequal to one. That is, value of y should not be zero. So range of f, it will be y belongs to minus infinite to zero, union zero to infinite. So we'll take all the values except zero. So range of f is this option four. So this p, it matches with four. Now we'll come to this function g x. And now gx is actually sine inverse of fx. Now range of fx is either fx is less than zero or fx is greater than zero. So we'll take fx less than zero or fx is greater than zero. If we'll take sine inverse, we'll get sine inverse fx is less than sine inverse zero, which is zero, and in the same way. Sine inverse f x is greater than sine inverse zero. So this g x it is either less than zero or g x is greater than zero. And since g x is sine inverse function, we know that its principal value range will lie between minus pi by two and plus pi by two. So range of this g x will be either from minus pi by two to not inclusive zero, union zero to. Inclusive pi by two, and the only option which is contained in this set is 
this option two. So range of G contains the set two. So Q, it matches with two. So answer to this question is P matches with four, Q matches with two, R with one and S with one. And that's your option A. And that is the answer to this question. In this video, we'll be proving properties of inverse trigonometric functions. Now we have already seen in lecture one that any inverse trigonometric function is nothing but an angle. Say for example, if we write sin inverse 1 by 2, value of sin is 1 by 2 at pi by 6. So sin inverse 1 by 2 is nothing but an angle whose value is pi by 6 in the principal value range of sin inverse. Now we can write the same angle in terms of other trigonometric ratios also. Now we know that cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2. So we can also express this angle pi by 6 as cos inverse root 3 by 2. We also know that 10 30 is 1 by root 3. So we can also write this as 10 inverse 1 by root 3. So by looking at this, we can infer the conclusion that it is possible to change sine inverse to cos inverse or tan inverse or any other trigonometric inverse function. So the first thing before we will start proving the properties is how to change one inverse trigonometric function to another. Now suppose we have sine inverse x and we want to change it to cos inverse. So what we will do is we will take the sine inverse x as some angle theta because any trigonometric inverse function is nothing but an angle. Now we can take sine on the right hand side, we can write x as sine theta. Now once we have sine theta, we need to write cos theta. Now how do we write cos theta? There are two ways. We know that cos theta is under root of 1 minus sine square theta. Now sine theta is x, so we can write 1 minus x square. So we can write this theta as cos inverse of under root 1 minus x square. So we can change sine inverse x as cos inverse under root of 1 minus x square. Now there will be some restriction on the domain of x when it will be possible but as of now we are not going into that detail. We will study the detail once we have studied self-adjusting property in inverse trigonometric function. So as of now we are dealing with the basic method to change one trigonometric inverse function into another. Now another way of conversion is we can take a right angle triangle. This is sin theta so it will be x and this is 1 and it will be 1 minus x square. What is cos theta in this? Cos theta will be 1 minus x square so we can simply write theta as cos inverse under root of 1 minus x square. So sin inverse x is broadly equal to cos inverse under root 1 minus x square. Now we have to change it to 10. We can write 10 theta and 10 theta in this case is x upon under root 1 minus x square. So we can write this as 10 inverse x upon under root 1 minus x square. Now we can do the same for any trigonometric expression. Suppose we are given cos inverse 2 by 3 and we have to change it to sin inverse and tan inverse. So what we will do is we will take this as theta. So we will have cos theta as 2 by 3. Now we will take a right angle triangle. This is theta, this is 2 and this is 3 and here it will be 9 minus 4 under root 5. So we can write this as sin inverse. Now what is sin theta? Sin theta is root 5 by 3. So it will be sin inverse under root 5 by 3. And what is tan theta? Tan theta in this case is root 5 by 2. So we will write this as tan inverse under root 5 by 3. So this is how we are going to change one trigonometric inverse function into another. Now the first property is sine inverse of minus x it is minus sine inverse of x. Now how do we prove it? So what we will do is we will let sine inverse of minus x as some angle theta. So we will get minus x equals 
sin theta. Now we can take this minus on the right hand side. We can write x as minus sin theta. Now we know that sin minus theta is minus sin theta. So we can actually write this as x equals sin minus theta. Now again, we'll take inverse function. So we can write minus theta equals sin inverse x or theta is minus sin inverse of x. So sin inverse minus x equals theta and theta equals minus sin inverse x. So from here we can say sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse x. So if we have sin inverse minus 1 by root 2, we can write this as minus sin inverse 1 by root 2 and sin inverse 1 by root 2 is pi by 4. So it will be minus pi by 4. Now the second one is cos inverse of minus x. Now cos inverse minus x is pi minus cos inverse x. Now for this what we will do is we will again take this as theta. So we will write cos inverse of minus x as theta. So we will write minus x equals cos theta or x equals minus cos theta. Now here cos minus theta is not minus cos theta but cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta. So we can write x as cos pi minus theta. Now we'll take inverse function. So we can write cos inverse x equals pi minus theta or theta is pi minus cos inverse of x. Now comparing these two, we can write cos inverse minus x equals pi minus cos inverse of x. So we have to write cos inverse of minus 1 by 2. We'll have to write this as pi minus cos inverse 1 by 2. So it will be pi minus. Now what is cos inverse 1 by 2? Cos inverse 1 by 2 is pi by 3. So it will be 2 pi by 3. Now if you will recall principal value range of sin inverse and cos inverse. So principal value range of sin inverse is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So if sin has a negative value, the angle should be in fourth quadrant and we are getting this angle in the fourth quadrant. And for cos inverse, principal value range is from 0 to pi. So if cos is taking a negative value, the answer must lie in second quadrant, which is true in this case. So this is how we prove properties for sin inverse minus x and cos inverse minus x. I'll just write the result for other expressions. You can prove them in the same way. So third one is tan inverse minus x and tan inverse minus x is minus 10 inverse x. Now cosec inverse x, it is same as sin inverse. So cosec inverse minus x will be minus cosec inverse of x. Secant inverse of minus x will be same as that of cos. So it will be pi minus secant inverse of x. And make a note for this one and which is cot inverse of minus x. Cot inverse of minus x is not same as 10 inverse of minus x. So it is not minus cot inverse x. It is actually pi minus cot inverse of x. And the reason for that is principal value range for 10 inverse is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and principal value range for cot inverse x is from 0 to pi. So 10 inverse is negative in fourth quadrant whereas cot inverse is negative in second quadrant. So we have to get the result in second quadrant and that is the reason it is not minus cot inverse x but pi minus cot inverse of x. Now we will come to second set of properties and which is sin inverse of x is equal to cosec inverse of 1 by x. So if we'll just take the reciprocal of the number, we can change sin inverse into cosec inverse. Now how do we prove it? Now this again is simple. So let sin inverse x as theta, then x will be simply sin theta. Now we'll take reciprocal 1 upon sin theta is cosec theta and it'll be equal to 1 by x. 
So we can write this as theta equals cosec inverse 1 by x. So from here we can say sin inverse x is equal to cosec inverse 1 by x. And in the same way, we can write cos inverse x as secant inverse 1 by x. And the third one is tan inverse x is cot inverse 1 by x. And here in the third one, we need to remember that this is true only when x is greater than 0. Because when x is a negative number, there is a difference in quadrant for tan inverse and cot inverse. So tan inverse x is equal to cot inverse 1 by x only when x is a positive number. So if we have secant inverse 2, we can write this as cos inverse 1 by 2 and cos inverse 1 by 2 is nothing but pi by 3. Suppose if we have cot inverse minus root 3, now we cannot write this as tan inverse minus 1 by root 3 because this formula it is only valid when x is greater than 0. So in this case, what do we actually do? So if it is cot inverse of minus root 3, now we know that cot inverse minus x is pi minus cot inverse x. So we write this as pi minus cot inverse of root 3. Now this number is positive. Now we can write cot inverse x as 10 inverse 1 by x. So we'll write pi minus 10 inverse 1 by root 3. So it'll be pi minus and this is pi by 6. So it'll be 5 pi by 6. So that's your second set of properties. Now third set of properties is actually trigonometric identities. So for inverse trigonometric function, we have three set of identities. And the first one is sine inverse x plus cos inverse x and it is equal to pi by 2 where x belongs to minus 1 and plus 1. That is it holds in the domain of sine inverse and cos inverse. Now, how do we prove this result? So again, what we'll do is we'll let sine inverse x as some theta. We'll get x as sine theta. Now we know that cos 90 minus theta is sine theta. So we can write x as cos pi by 2 minus theta. So we can write cos inverse x as pi by 2 minus theta. Now we'll take this theta on the left hand side and theta is sine inverse x. So from here we can write sine inverse x plus cos inverse x and it is equal to pi by 2. So this result it is valid for any value of x which lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So it is an identity in inverse trigonometric function. In the same way we can prove tan inverse x plus cot inverse x equals pi by 2 when x belongs to a and third one is secant inverse of x plus cosec inverse of x equals pi by 2 when x belongs to minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite. Now you'll get some simple questions such as y equals sine inverse x square upon x square plus 1 plus secant inverse x square plus 1 upon x square find dy by dx. Now what we know is secant inverse of x is cos inverse 1 by x. So we can write this as y equals sine inverse x square upon x square plus 1 plus cos inverse x square upon x square plus 1. Now here this value is same. So it is sine inverse x plus cos inverse x and which is nothing but pi by 2. So this function is actually a constant function. So we write dy by dx. dy by dx in this case is nothing but 0. So derivative of this function is nothing but 0. Now we'll come to two of the most important properties of trigonometric inverse function. Now we have already studied in functions that if f and f inverse are inverse functions of each other then 
f of f inverse is equal to f inverse of f and this is equal to x. So self-adjusting property in inverse trigonometric function mean that sine of sine inverse x is equal to x when x lies in the domain of sine inverse when x lies between minus 1 and plus 1 in the same way cos of cos inverse x is equal to x when x lies between minus 1 and plus 1 tan of tan inverse x is also x when x belongs to r cot of cot inverse x is x when x belongs to r secant of secant inverse x is x when x belongs to minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite and cosec of cosec inverse x is equal to x when again x lies in minus infinite to minus 1 union 1 to infinite and this is very simple to prove so again in this we'll take sine inverse x as some theta clearly x is sine theta now we'll take sine both side we can write sine of sine inverse x is nothing but sine theta and sine theta is nothing but x so we can write sine of sine inverse x it is equal to x so basically f and f inverse they'll cancel out each other and we'll get this x provided this x lies in the domain of the function so if we have sine of sine inverse 2 by 3 we'll cancel this sine and sine inverse we can write this result as 2 by 3 but if we have sine of sine inverse 3 by 2 now we cannot cancel it we cannot write this as 3 by 2 because this sine inverse 3 by 2 in itself is not defined so all these self-adjusting properties they're very simple and they should be used considering the domain of any inverse trigonometric function now there'll be questions on other self-adjusting property and which is cos of cos inverse x is x and sine of sine inverse x is x if x lies in the domain of respective inverse trigonometric functions now here the question is if x lies between 0 and 1 then under root of 1 plus x square x cos cot inverse x plus sine cot inverse x square minus 1 to the power 1 by 2 is equal to which of the following now we'll take this as y so this is y equals under root of 1 plus x square and then it is x cos cot inverse x plus sine cot inverse of x square minus 1 whole to the power 1 by 2. Now what we'll do is here we'll let cot inverse x as theta. So it'll be cot inverse x equals theta so x equals cot theta now we'll replace x with cot theta we can write y equals under root of 1 plus cot square theta and it'll be cot theta into now this is cos theta plus sin theta whole square minus 1 whole to the power 1 by 2 so we can write this as y equals now 1 plus cot square theta is cosec square theta so it will be cosec theta and here it will be cos square theta plus sin square theta upon sin theta whole square minus 1 to the power 1 by 2 now cos square theta plus sin square theta it is 1 so we will write this as cosec theta and here will be cosec square theta minus 1 to the power 1 by 2. Now cosec square theta minus 1 is cot square theta. So we can write this as y equals cosec theta into cot theta. So this y it simplifies to cos theta upon sin square theta. 
Now we have taken cot theta as x. So we'll draw a right angle triangle. Now this is theta. This is x. This is 1. And it'll be under root of 1 plus x square. Now cos theta is x upon under root of 1 plus x square. And sin square theta will be 1 upon 1 plus x square. So it simplifies to x into under root of 1 plus x square and that's your option C. Now let us take a matching type problem. So we'll start with this P which is we need to simplify 1 upon y square cos of 10 inverse y plus y of sine of 10 inverse y upon cot of sin inverse y plus 10 of sin inverse y whole square plus y to the power 4 whole to the power 1 by 2 and let us take this expression as p. Now first we will simplify this expression in the numerator which is cos of 10 inverse y plus y sine 10 inverse of y. Now here we let 10 inverse of y as theta so we can write 10 theta equals y so we'll draw a right angle triangle this is y this is 1 and this is under root of 1 plus y square. So this expression it simply becomes now cos theta plus y sin theta. Now cos theta is 1 upon under root of 1 plus y square and then y and sin theta is y upon under root of 1 plus y square. So we'll simplify. We can simply write this as under root of 1 plus y square. Now we'll simplify this expression in the denominator which is cot of sin inverse y plus 10 of sin inverse y. Now here we'll let sin inverse y as theta. So we can write sin theta equals y. So this is theta, this is y, this is 1 and it will be 1 minus y square. Now we need to find the value of cot theta plus 10 theta. Now cot theta here is under root of 1 minus y square upon y and plus 10 theta is y upon under root of 1 minus y square. So it will be 1 upon y into under root of 1 minus y square. Now we will put these two values in the expression and we will find the value of p. So we can write this p as 1 upon y square into now cos 10 inverse y plus y sin 10 inverse y which is under root of 1 plus y square upon then this value 1 upon y 1 minus y square whole square plus y to the power 4 whole to the power 1 by 2. Now here y square and y square will cancel. So we will get this p as under root of 1 minus y to the power 4 whole square plus y to the power 4 to the power 1 by 2. Now square and square root will cancel. y to the power 4 will also cancel. So value of p will be simply 1. So this p it matches with this option 4. So p it matches with now the second part is 
if cos x plus cos y plus cos z equals 0 and sin x plus sin y plus sin z is also 0, then the possible value of cos x minus y by 2 is. Now here what we'll do is we'll write cos x plus cos y is minus cos z and sin x plus sin y is minus sin z. Now we'll square both the equations and then we'll add them. So we'll write cos x plus cos y whole square plus sin x plus sin y whole square and it'll be cos square z plus sin square z. Now here cos square x plus sin square x will be 1. In the same way cos square y plus sin square y will be 1 plus 2 and then we'll get cos x cos y plus sin x sin y and this value will be 1. So this 1 and 1 will cancel. Now this is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b which is nothing but cos a minus b. So we can write cos x minus y is minus 1 by 2. Now using half angle formula we can write cos x minus y is 2 cos square x minus y by 2 minus 1. Now value of cos x minus y is nothing but minus 1 by 2. So from here we can write 2 cos square x minus y by 2 will be 1 by 2 or cos x minus y by 2 will be plus or minus 1 by 2 which matches with this option 3. So Q it matches with 3. Now we'll come to this third part which is R and it says if cos pi by 4 minus x into cos 2x plus sin x into sin 2x into secant x is equal to cos x into sin 2x into secant x plus cos pi by 4 plus x into cos 2x we need to find what are the possible values of secant x. Now what we'll do is we'll take these two terms together and we'll take these other two terms together. So we can write cos 2x into cos pi by 4 minus x minus cos pi by 4 plus x and it will be equal to sin 2x into secant x and it will be cos x minus sin x. We can simplify this as cos 2x and this is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b minus cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So we will get 2 sin pi by 4 into sin x and here we will get 2 sin x into cos x into secant x and it will be cos x minus sin x. We can also write this cos 2x as cos square x minus sin square x. Now here we can cancel cos x minus sin x. So one of the solutions that we will get is cos x minus sin x equals 0. We can also cancel 2 sin x. So another solution that we will get is sin x equals 0. Here cos x into secant x will be 1. So now we are left with cos x plus sin x into 1 by root 2 and it will be equal to 1. So from here we will get this condition that cos x plus sin x and it will be root 2. Now from this first condition we will get x as pi by 4. From this second condition we will get x as 0 and from this third condition we will get x as 
pi by 4. So here the value of secant x will be secant 0 which is 1 or secant pi by 4 which is root 2. So this r it matches with either 4 or 2 but there is no 4 given in this column. So we will take r matches with 2. So p is 4, q is 3, r is 2 and that's your option b. But we'll still verify this S. Now S is cot of sin inverse under root of 1 minus x square. It is sin of 10 inverse a root 6x. Now since it involves sin inverse under root of 1 minus x square, clearly x should lie between minus 1 and plus 1. Now first we will simplify this expression on the left hand side which is cot of sin inverse of under root of 1 minus x square. So we will take this as theta. We can write sin theta is under root of 1 minus x square. So this is your theta. And this is under root of 1 minus x square. This is 1. Then it'll be x. Now we have to write cot theta. Cot theta will be x upon under root of 1 minus x square. Now we'll simplify this right hand side. Now this RHS is sine of 10 inverse of x root 6. Now we will take this as some angle theta. So here 10 theta is under root 6x. So this is theta. This is root 6x. And this is 1. And this is 1 plus 6x square. Now we will write sin theta. Sin theta will be under root 6x upon under root of 1 plus 6x square. Now we will rewrite this equation. We can write this equation as x into under root of 1 minus x square. It is equal to under root of 6x upon under root of 1 plus 6x square. Now here x and x will cancel. So one of the value of x will be x equals 0. And then if we will square it, we will get 6 minus 6x square and it will be 1 plus 6x square. So x square will be simply 5 by 12 or the value of x is 1 by 2 under root 5 by 3. So one of the possible value of x is 1 by 2 under root 5 by 3 which is this option 1. So this s it matches with 1. So p4, q3, r2 and s1 and that's your option B.